Hello and welcome to your Actives Beyond the Byline podcast. I am Evie Chiori and this week we delve into EU's enlargement. EU Foreign Affairs Ministers had an informal meeting on the 31st of August in Toledo, Spain, and enlargement was one of the topics that were touched with EU Enlargement Commissioner Oliver Vahey emphasizing that EU enlargement will be possible by 2030. So what are the key dates regarding decision making and what's the plan of the European Commission to achieve this goal by 2030? Commissioner Vahey said to Euractiv's global editor Alexandra Brzozowski that enlargement by 2030 is feasible, but it will depend on the efforts of both candidate countries and the EU itself. The European Commission plans to make substantial proposals this coming October, including a growth plan aimed at increasing investment in the Western Balkans. These proposals will focus on various areas, including rule of law, democracy, economic reforms and integration, as well as providing financial support to bridge the development gap before countries become EU members. And all that is feasible if there is flexibility in the approach to candidate countries tailoring the process to each country's progress. To understand better what is happening with EU's enlargement and what was discussed in Spain, I'm joined by Euractiv's global editor Alexandra Przozowski. Alex, Ukraine has brought enlargement back on the agenda last year, but the new season seems to crunch time for discussions on what the EU could look like in the future. So what is lining up for us in the next few weeks? It's really going to be the main issue on the agenda this season. It's fair to say that we got a first taste of the fact that enlargement could actually eclipse most of the other outstanding policy files until the end of this year, with the messaging coming out of the EU institutions last week. So we saw European Commission President Charles Michel boldly proclaiming um, a 2030 target for enlargement without fully specifying what this would actually entail. The Commission rather bluntly also pushed back against those remarks and then only to to kind of sign up to them in the end. So Enlargement Commissioner Vahey uh, clarified that in an interview last week with us that he thinks it's actually doable, but under certain reform conditions, which will be really the core point to watch. So we expect a first substantial discussion between EU leaders um, probably in Granada, in, in Spain, under the Spanish presidency, and that's that's early October, which will likely deal mostly with um, what reforms that you should need to undergo before new members can join. And then the European Commission is expected to present its annual progress reports for countries um, in the bloc's accession process. For the first time, this would also include Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia. Um, and that's to be expected in mid-October. And here it will become really interesting because the main question will be whether the Commission will recommend to open accession talks with Ukraine and then maybe with Moldova and at the same time grant candidate status to Georgia. And can we expect that they will? You know, for now, the EU's enlargement policy has been a strict one, with the European Commission stressing that it is a merit-based process and candidate countries having to fulfill a number of requirements before they see any progress on their admission process. So what is there to see? So, so far, what we've been hearing around Brussels is that it is looking likely that it might actually happen. I mean, early in May, as some remember, the, the Commission presented an informal oral update on the progress of those three countries on the EU path. And it frankly looked relatively grim. I mean, back then, Ukraine had fully implemented two out of seven, Moldova three out of nine, and Georgia three out of 12 recommendations that the Commission has spelled out for them. But uh, over the summer, there's been some progress made, um, according to what our sources in the capitals tell us and, and what what um, some in the Commission have been saying. So really, the hardest decision actually might come down to recommending candidate status for Georgia, which has been rather backsliding than improving and is currently actually gripped in a political crisis um, where we will see a, a bit more of uh, jet set diplomacy in the next few days as well. The, the EU's high representative is supposed to go to Georgia this week. So there's a lot going on to, to kind of make the last push before, before October. Now, some Western Balkan countries, especially Albania, are becoming less patient with the process. Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama has openly expressed his frustrations uh, towards the EU. But can they and other Balkan countries, of course, that are in the waiting room, expect to get anything in the short term? 
It's true that some Balkan countries have been waiting years to join the EU, and under the current legal framework, they have to fulfill all requirements before this becomes possible. So, so that's clear. But in some sense, the debate we will see will be strongly related on how to make them and all the other EU candidate countries ready before they actually can join. Mm -hmm. So what Commissioner Vahe told us in the interview last week was that the enlargement package in October will come with substantial proposals from the Commission side on the issue. Um, he dropped the word progressive integration, so that would mean aligning those countries' uh, policies with EU legislation in certain areas before they um, are ready to become a member. So the idea is not fully new, but um, could get more traction to offer the EU hopefuls actually tangible results in, on the way into the block. The plans could include... Um, a growth plan that was already kind of mentioned by, by Commission President von der Leyen in May, but this would kind of seek to increase investment in the Western Balkans and also to ease the economic impact of, of Russia's war in Ukraine. So according to the Commission, this would come with everything uh, from reforms on the rule of law, democracy, economic reforms, and also improving investors' climate in the region. Mm -hmm. um, and also with the necessary financial support to, to kind of close the development gap before those countries become members um, and kind of ease the burden before the actual process starts. And that could look like a substitute for enlargement. To some, to some in the region, to some member states, it does. I think that criticism has been has been appearing over the past few few months. But the commission has assured it isn't meant to be one. Also, considering that the process will need to go hand in hand with the EU actually adapting to a future with more members. And Alex, some have expressed doubt that an EU at 36 would be operational and there is need for reforms before enlargement. But what kind of reforms are we talking about? So it's true that despite the revived uh, enlargement debate, uh, member states have been rather moving slowly on their own reform debate. Um, Germany and France over the past months have insisted that um, reforms should come before future accession. But there's more and more voices across the block that say a full EU reform might actually not be necessary. So rather adjusting certain policy fields would, would do the job. So this will be definitely something to watch in Granada. This will be the core part of the discussions. And one of the obvious issues, obviously, is also the decision-making process in an EU that might be up to 36 members and if that might work. So when we think how hard it is currently to agree on sanctions, packages or migration or military aid to Ukraine, for example, with, with Hungary and others blocking those decisions, um, this will be actually a crucial battle. So the question of how and when to enlarge um, could really prove to be the main battle for, for, for this season. Um, but I think we don't expect any really definitive answers on this, at least not before the end of this commission. So we really can expect that this process will carry on over the next few months. And, and also, essentially, for the next commission, it will be a decision whether to continue on, on this path and, well, maybe how to, how to adapt. Mm -hmm. So the first important um, date that we have to keep in mind is somewhere in October. And then after that, we're hoping that maybe there will be reform internally in the EU and then they can talk again about enlargement. Absolutely. So really, October is the crunch time for, for all the um, legislative uh, proposals and, and really the discussions to happen. However, I think one of the main other kind of crucial crucial uh, dates in, in, in the end of the year is December, where EU leaders meet for the last um, EU summit of the season. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, considering that the Commission might recommend EU accession talks uh, with Ukraine, I think that will be really the time where the decision could be made. And depending on how well, Ukraine's progress at that moment uh, will be, um, we can see quite an interesting debate coming up. That's all for this week. I am Evi Kiori and this was your Active's Beyond the Byline podcast. Visit your Active to stay on top of the latest news. And if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, you can do so on your favorite podcasting app. This episode was produced by myself with the help of Alexandra Brzozowski. Thank you for tuning in and until next week.